Hello everyone, welcome to Bhaiji's exam prep, welcome to the coffee with concept. So here we are going to learn the basic concept of the convolution and what are the different type of convolution and the fast way to calculate the convolution for the standard signals. So let's start the session with a very brief introduction that is whenever we have a system like a LTI system, if we give input to that system, then we get the output as y of n. So how do we get this y of n? That is nothing but the convolution of input and the impulse response of the system. If I talk about the digital signal or discrete signal. So basically this is a discrete signal. As you can see, this x of n is a discrete signal and we are talking about the discrete time LTI system. So the output is given as the convolution between the input and the impulse response of the system. So how can we perform the convolution in a very fast manner that we have to understand here and what are the different properties of the convolution sum and the convolution integral that we will discuss and again we will discuss that what are the standard or fast way to calculate the convolution between the standard signal. So if I talk about the continuous time LTI system so it is represented by x of t and the impulse response of the continuous LTI system is h of t then you get the y of t which is the convolution between x of t and h of t and in this case you find the convolution integral which is minus infinite to infinite x of tau h of t minus tau. So here if you want to write the convolution sum then it can be written as summation n is equal to k is equal to minus infinite to infinite x of k h of n minus k okay so in this way you can calculate the convolution integral now let's see how do we calculate the uh, in a shortcut method suppose we have uh, the signals like 1 2 2 3 and 2 minus 1 3 and we want to perform it by the convolution integral uh, convolution sum actually because these are the discrete time signal so how can we take this so sum by column method we are going to take and it is represented in this way this is nothing but a 1 2 2 and 3 okay this is your x of n and here we had a h of n so what is h of n this is 2 minus 1 3 so this is 2 minus 1 and 3 so just multiply them so when you multiply 1 with 2 minus 1 and 3 you will get 2 minus 1 and 3 when you multiply with 2 you will get 4 minus 4 and 6 okay and then again it is 4 minus 2 and 6 and this is the minus 2 right this is minus 2 and uh, we will get 6 minus 3 and 9 then now after that you have to add them by this way so you just add them in this way and you will get your final answer okay so how do you add them so this addition is y of n equal to this y of n equal to this addition is 2 okay this is the addition this is i am talking about this addition so this is 2 then 4 minus 1 is 3, 4 minus 1 is 3, then 4 plus 3, 7 minus 2 is 5, so you are getting 5, 6 plus 6, 12 minus 2, which is 10, and this is 6 minus 3, it is 3, and this is 9. So this is the shortcut method to calculate the convolution between the two discrete signals. Okay, so this is the discrete sequence and by which we can calculate. And by default, the 0 is this one. If it is not given, suppose this is given as the 0 at n equal to 0 I am talking about. So, n equal to 0 is at uh, 1 and here it is at 2. Then how can you calculate this is n equal to 0 for this x of n. This is n equal to 0 for this h of n. Then this 2 will also be representing the n equal to 0 in y of n. Suppose uh, in any case, uh, suppose uh, this is your n equal to 0 and in this case, suppose this is your n equal to 0 then this one will be the common point in both the case this is n equal to 0 and this is n equal to 0 so this addition that is 6 minus 3 will give you n equal to 0 okay so in this way uh, you calculate the 
value which is at n equal to 0. So I am removing it because according to the present question, this is our n equal to 0. Correct? This is known as sum by column method and this is called as the linear convolution. That is known as linear convolution. In some other lecture of coffee with concepts, we will understand the circular convolution. Okay. Now, this example we have seen. What are the important properties of the discrete time convolution sum if x of n and h of n is shifted by n0? So, y of n that is x of n minus n0 convolved with h of n is nothing but uh, x of n convolved with h of n minus n0 that is output is also shifted by n0. The sum of the samples if you want to calculate the uh, relation between them then the sum of the samples of the output is equal to the product of sum of the samples of signals which are convolved that is x of n you are convolving h of n you are convolving then simply sum the value of x of n and h of n you will get the sum of y of n so that you can see in this example suppose i add x of n if i calculate the summation of x of n then what i will get 2 plus 2 4 4 plus 1 uh, 5 plus 3 8 so i am getting the summation of x of n is 8 and what about the summation of h of n this is 3 plus 2 5 5 minus 1 is 4 so what is the summation of y of n the summation of y of n is summation over n of x of n multiplied with summation over n of h of n that means 8 into 4 so it should be 32 so it should be 32 so let's add then so if i add the summation of if i add the uh, y of n then i will get 5 plus 3 8 plus 2 10 10 plus 10 20 20 plus 9 29 and plus 3 that is 32 so the addition i am getting as 32 so this is the one property that you can verify what is the length of x the length of x is 4 the length of h is 3 so what is the length of y the length of y is 3 plus 3 6 so this 6 is how it is coming this is nothing but the addition of the length of x and h minus 1 so 4 plus 3 7 7 minus 1 is 6 so in this way we are getting the length so here it is written the length of y is related to the x and h as lx plus lh minus 1 the starting index equals the sum of the starting indices of the x of n and h of n the ending index of y of n equals the sum of ending indices of x of n and y of n and if you convolve any signal with the uh, impulse then you will get the signal itself and uh, commutative property it follows this is in the continuous time this is these properties we have seen for the discrete time and these are the properties which we are seeing for the continuous time so x of t convolved with h of t can be reversed that is h of t convolved with x of t time invariance that when you shift it by alpha then any uh, the signal will shift by the alpha whether you shift by the signal or you shift the impulse response linearity it follows convolution with the impulse in the re replicates the sorry convolution with an impulse replicates the signal x of t with the impulse as we see that in the we get the signal itself and if it is shifted form then it is, will be the shifted form the starting index equals the sum of a starting index of x of t and h of t ending index will be sum of the uh, ending index of x, x of t and h of t the duration of y of t equals the sum of the duration of the x of t and y of t uh, h of t the area y of t equals the product of the area x of t and h of t derivatives x dash t convolved with h t is equal to y dash t so if suppose the two signals are convolved but any one of these are in the form of derivative then the output is also derivative either the derivative will be x of t then the output is derivative of y t and uh, if it is derivative of h of t then also it is derivative of y of t so any one signal if you differentiate so it will be equivalent to the differentiation of the output scaling x of alpha and h of alpha t you get 1 upon mod alpha y of alpha t so remember that even even both the signals are uh, scaled but we are not having 1 upon alpha square it is 1 upon alpha y of alpha t suppose 
we have a two standard rectangular pulse right if i have the two standard rectangular pulse then what is the convolution these are the standard form standard signals which we will be using most of the time in the signals and the con communication for the electronics students so suppose this is your minus a and uh, this is your plus a this is your minus b and this is your plus b and let us suppose the height is a1 and this height is a2 okay this is x of t and this is h of t and suppose you want to convolve them okay you want to convolve them that means you want to calculate y of t not y of n this is y of t we want to calculate as x of t convolve with h of t then in this case what will be the well, uh, shape because this is the two symmetrical rectangular pulse so convolution between the two symmetrical rectangular pulse convolution between the two symmetrical convolution between two symmetrical rectangular pulse is triangular first point and the convolution between two unsymmetrical rectangular pulse is trapezium okay so if a and b are equal then it will be the same width and if a and b are not equal then it will be not having the same width so according to that i will draw first case case 1 i am taking the case 1 case 1 when a is equal to b that means it is symmetrical so when it is symmetrical you will get the shape like this okay when a and b both are equal then it is a plus b by 2 with minus sign and this is plus of a plus b by 2 and a and b are equal so you can keep the value according to that and it will be zero suppose a and b are equal then it is minus a and minus b so minus a minus b actually i am calculating the lower indices so lower index i am calculating by adding the lower limit so minus a minus b i am adding the lower limit of the trapezoid so this is minus a lower limit this is a minus b and because a is equal to b so it is minus 2a so when you will put the value you will get the minus 2a okay so here we will get uh, wait a second here i will get not just 2 will not get yes okay so we will get minus 2a and then plus 2a and uh, if uh, this is the higher index higher index i am getting by adding both the higher index that is the higher index is plus a and the higher index for the second rectangular plus is uh, rectangular pulse is b so we are adding both them both of them so we are getting if a and b are equal so this is 2a so this will be 2a and this will be minus 2a so what is this how i get this zero value so this is the intermediate value you can say so how do you get this intermediate value so to calculate this intermediate values where the slope is changing the slope is changing take the first lower and the next higher so for the first rectangular pulse take the lower limit which is minus a and the higher limit which is plus b and a is equal to b so it is zero okay and and you can also take and you can also take the first lower limit uh, first higher limit which is plus a and second lower limit which is minus b again a is equal to b you are getting zero so you are getting the slope change two times at zero so the pulse is going like this in it is going like this but now it is going in the negative side so first of all this positive pulse positive ramp should be cancelled so you are applying the negative ramp at zero because of the first zero 
and because this zero is continued means this zero is occurred second time so you are applying the negative slope another time at zero so it is now going in the negative side it is now going in the negative side so in this way it is forming a triangle now let's take another case which is having the case number 2 case number 2 when a and b are not equal when a and b are not equal as we have written already that it will form a trapezoidal shape that is trapezoid so it is going to form a trapezium so you will get this trapezium like this okay now what is the minimum value the minimum value is the addition of the minimum value addition of the minimum value is minus a and minus b what is the maximum value addition of the maximum value of each pulse which is plus a and plus b so in this way we are getting okay so this is y of t and now how do you get this slope change so at this point the take the lower value minus a and the higher value plus b of the second and uh, it is a minus b higher value of the first pulse and the lower value of the second Dip, uh, we are assuming that a is greater than b okay now what about this height how do you get this height so height is calculated by the uh, area property so we said that area of these two pulses should be equal uh, the area of this y of t is equal to the product of the area of the first and the second so in this way you can calculate or because we are learning the shortcut trick so uh, you can calculate the area property by the area property or you can directly write the height is the height is equal to the height of first pulse multiplied with height of second pulse right multiplied with the minimum width minimum width of the pulse okay so the, like in this case it is a1 and a2 is the height of the first and second pulse and whatever will be the minimum width if a is greater than b then the width will be 2b will be the minimum width so because i am assuming a is greater than b so the minimum width will be 2b so this will become the height of this pulse which is a1 a2 into 2b so it will become a1 a2 into 2b the height of this pulse okay or you can also calculate by the area property so this is how the convolution you can calculate in a very fast manner i have, I have given you in depth concept also and i have given you the property also thank you for watching this copy with concepts in the next uh, convolution some uh, in the next uh, copy with concepts we may understand the concept of circular convolution as well or i will take any other topic so don't forget to subscribe this channel uh, to learn the concepts with fun to learn the concepts with the copy that is in your morning and the evening session thank you and uh, don't forget to subscribe the channel and also uh, join our telegram group to get the update about the upcoming uh, lectures which we are going to deliver in the youtube the concepts the series like for the gate 24 which what we are launching for any other exam what we are launching gate guidance etc etc everything you will get in the this channel only in a very precise manner so don't forget to subscribe this channel thank you